So, I don't know about uh, those of you who are watching, but the more time I've spent using the computer, the more I've gravitated towards the command line here, and doing things through just a simple interface rather than more complex apps that take longer to load and launch and do things. I think my entry point to this was something like Brew, which is the uh, sort of command line package manager for macOS. You actually have to install it yourself, but if you're using any kind of Linux or BSD distribution, you'll have a package manager, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, and then from there, there's a really, really great text editors on the command line like them and even emacs is really good so good in fact that i don't have it installed currently there's more and more of these types of apps that i use uh you know for example when i discovered youtube download the command line utility i never used clipped route or any random website again there's really no reason to and there are a lot of good utilities for downloading things from the internet there's curl there's a uh, wget there's a whole bunch of things but what i want to focus on today is torrents because up until this point, I haven't really utilized any command line utilities for torrents. And there are a lot of command line utilities uh, that will let you download torrents, a lot of videos online about all of them. Uh, but what I want to focus on is just picking one and making it as usable as possible. So uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to pick one. And in this case, I'm going to sort of pick what I think would be the most ubiquitous one. And that is a command line utility called uh, Transmission. Uh, it's actually called uh, Transmission CLI, and it's probably going to be called that in any package manager you would be using. Uh, on macOS, you would just do brew install Transmission CLI to get it, and it would probably be something pretty similar to that, no matter what package manager you're using. Now, if you're familiar with torrents at all, on the command line or not, you'll probably know that Transmission is a pretty popular torrent app to begin with. Uh, this is a great app because it runs everywhere. It's open source, and it runs on Linux and Mac and Windows and everything. Um, it's probably about as ubiquitous as something like uTorrent these days. Uh, and it's also quite good because it is made by the same people. So I thought the easiest way to get started here would be to just compare the features of the transmission sort of GUI here to the transmission command line and try to just reach feature parity and figure out how to do everything that we can do in this app on the command line or everything that I would do in this app on the command line. I'm not a big torrent person. Uh, now, in order to make sure that we are staying on the light side, not the dark side, you know, white lotus, not red lotus, um, we're going to be downloading some Linux ISOs, which I know is not the most exciting thing out there to download, <clears throat> but you know, it works the same either way. So. If I take a look in my download folder here, I have a Ubuntu 20.04 uh, ISO to download. Uh, and then over here in a browser, I have some links to magnet links to a FreeBSD torrent and uh, an Arch Linux torrent. Now, before we can actually start downloading, there's a tiny, tiny bit of setup that we need to do with the transmission command line utility. If we just type in transmission and then hit tab, You'll probably see there are a whole bunch of different utilities or apps that come with the transmission CLI. They're not really like dependencies or anything, well, they're just part of the app. Um, now, in this case, there's only really two of these we need to worry about. The first is transmission Damien, which we'll just use to set up a few things, and then transmission remote, which will be the command that we use to control basically everything. Uh, now, the first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to run transmission Damien to just start the transmission client. Um, that's all you have to do to get it started. You just type in transmission Damien and it will start running. Uh, the second thing that we need to do is use that command one more time, uh, but we're gonna add dash dash download gear for download directory, and then we'll just add a path. Um, usually this is gonna be downloads, and at least on macOS, I believe that's the default directory, uh, but you could change this to anything, of course, and that would be no big deal. And then from there, transmission is set up and ready to use over here on the command line. So the first option would be to use a torrent file. Um, if I open up my downloads, I have one of those files. And you can just use command O or, you know, file open or any other method or just drag and drop in the file. And there it is. It'll give you a couple of options about what you want to do with it. I don't think anyone ever really messes with those. You said add and now the torrent is downloading. Uh, now, of course, with the magnet link, the situation is just slightly more difficult. Actually, it's not really. All you need to do is get the actual magnet link. Well, we can go ahead and copy it. And then if I hit, uh, I believe it's command U, you can paste in the link and same situation. Now we've got a magnet link. It'll take a bit longer to like download metadata, but then you'll be good to go. You got uh, one more magnet link here. This is for uh, Arch Linux. 
And then once we have these started, we can like pause individual tor torrents. We can uh, stop them all, start them all, remove them all. Basically, we can just control them on an individual level as well as all as one. There's actually really not that much to controlling torrents. I mean, I'm sure there's way more advanced things you can do with it, but that's not really something that I would generally do. So uh, let's just get started here. Uh, so I'll just remove all of these from the transmission uh, GUI. And then we can probably just close this and just for good measure, we'll do brew uninstall that app just so that I never even have the option to use again. I really don't want to use it again. Uh, now from here, uh, using the transmission command line app is not too bad. We're going to use transmission remote. This is going to be how we're going to add things, remove things, control things, stop things, start things, download things. All of that is done with this one control transmission remote. So to add a torrent, we're going to do uh, dash a and then we can just link straight to our downloads. Well, maybe we can. And we'll select that Ubuntu torrent. And you can see localhost 9091 responded with success. So that should mean it's there downloading. Uh, we can also do the same thing with magnet links. We'll do a transmission remote dash A. Uh, we'll just make sure we surround it in quotes and we'll paste in the link. Hit enter, same thing, transmission responded with success. Uh, now, of course, it would be nice to be able to check this. So we can do transmission remote dash L. This will list all of our torrents. And you can see here, we have two torrents downloading at the moment, uh, a Ubuntu 20.4 and FreeBSD 12.1. Uh, each has an ID, each is telling us the percentage that's done, an ETA, and how much data we have, plus you know how much we're uploading, downloading, and a ratio. Uh, it also might be nice to not have to type out the whole command there every time, transmission remote. With tab completion, it's not really that big of a deal to type, but it's still a bit annoying. So what we can do is we can do alias, and we'll use TSM or something like that, equals transmission remote hit enter and then if we type tsm it's going to bring up a whole bunch of commands for us because that would be the same thing as just basically typing in transmission remote but if we do tsm dash l or tsm dash a that's i mean that's how it's going to work it's an alias uh now if you want to make that permanent uh you can go into your bash rc or your zsharc if you don't have one just make one in your home directory uh, in my case i've got one and you'll just go in here add in right down here the exact same thing you just typed into the command line you'll just add it into the actual bash rc or zsharc file and then reload the shell cool so let's go ahead and add our last torrent here i've got uh, one more magnet link so we'll do tsm dash a paste in that magnet link and there it is uh, if we do tsm dash l again we should have three torrents now and let's actually start to control these so uh one thing to note here each torrent that we add is going to have a torrent id you can see 59 60 61 uh, 59 for ubuntu 60 for the free bsd 61 for the arch linux uh, these ids are how we're going to control specific torrents so uh, let's say we want to pause the arch linux download we do transmission remote dash T, that's how you select a torrent, and we'll just select uh, 61 here. Uh, now you could also select them as two at a time, so let's say we want to select 61 and 59, which should be the Ubuntu torrent. Now we're selecting both the Ubuntu and the Arch Linux torrent, uh, and now we just need to give it an option. So we'll do dash dash stop, or you could also use dash S, both should stop it. Uh, simil similarly, uh, dash dash start, we'll start the torrents, and dash dash s will start or dash s will start the torrents so we'll do dash s and if we list out the torrents again you can see both the ubuntu torrent and the arch linux torrent under status have been stopped cool uh, now of course we could restart those very quickly by running the exact same command selecting 6159 and just doing start now everything's started everything is downloading and we're happy the only other thing that it seems immediately obvious to me that we would want to be able to do is to remove torrents. Uh, say we're done with it, or it's through downloading, through seeding and everything, or, you know, we just don't want to download it anymore. I probably don't need to explain why you would want to remove a torrent, but you want to remove a torrent. So we would do a transmission remote or a TSM. Uh, keep in mind that alias works, you know, just dash T to select some torrents. Uh, and let's say we want to remove 60, the FreeBSD torrent. We'll type in 60. And then we'll do dash R or dash dash remove. Sorry about the cars driving by. I'm trying very hard not to catch them in the video. but So we'll go ahead and remove that. And then if we list again, now we've only got two torrents downloading. 
amazing how that works. One other thing that might be worth mentioning is we can quickly start and stop or do anything else to all torrents by doing tsm-t and then rather than typing in a specific torrent ID or a comma separated group of torrent IDs, we can just type in all. And so we could stop all the torrents when we list them again. They're all stopped waiting for us to go. And of course, it would be just as easy to restart them all. Of course, there's probably some more complex things you could do with torrents. Um, keep in mind, if you just type in transmission remote, it will list literally every option that you have for uh, controlling the torrents. So you can just take a look through this list and flip through it and see if there's anything else that uh, interests you. There's way to set download and upload limits for specific torrents. Uh, there's way to there's ways to do all sorts of crap. It doesn't matter. You can list the torrents files which that's very handy. Um, you know, let's say, I think I think the way this would work, I have used this once or twice, but I believe what you would do is, well, let me clear out of that. If I wanted to see the files for Ubuntu, what I could do is uh, tsm-t59-f, and that'll list actually what files are in that torrent. It's not like a very good example for, you know, <laughs> Linux ISOs, because it's really only gonna have one file in there, but if you're downloading <clears throat> other things, you know, that could be pretty handy for you. Uh, now, anyways, what I do want to focus on now is just actually getting download status is a tiny bit tricky with this particular app. Uh, TSM-L isn't really like a live command. It's not just going to keep running in the background and update for you. It's just going to give you like a one-time glimpse into exactly what's going on. That's not super helpful. So there's a couple of ways that we can avoid this. And one of them is super easy. I should probably mention it either way. And that is that even with this command line utility running in the back, you still have a GUI interface that you can use. All you have to do is go into any browser, type in localhost, and I believe it's on port uh, 9091. And you have a GUI interface very similar to the transmission CLI app, which I just installed, so it's not going to be there. But um, you can do everything else. You can move and you can pause and stop and move things around and edit your queue and do everything that you would be able to do with a torrent just in this nice little web interface. But of course, that kind of defeats the purpose of a command line app. This is nice. And if you ever get stuck, can't figure out how to do something in the command line app and you just need to do something really quickly, this is certainly an option. You can just go to localhost 9091. Uh, you know, it'd probably be a good idea to like bookmark this or something if you don't want to remember. Uh, one other thing that I should mention though is that if we do tsm-a and let's get a magnet link here. I'm sure I've got one, there we go. Um, whenever we add the magnet links, well, helps if I do it right. You can see it's responding from localhost 9091. So it's very verbose about telling you exactly what it's on, exactly what port it's using. So it's not terribly difficult to remember 9091, uh, but you know, if you're prone to forgetting that, just bookmark it, it's no big deal. But of course we can probably get a tiny bit simpler. So uh, first thing you'll want to do is you're going to create a folder to store some scripts in. Um, I already have such a folder. I just use um, dash bin or dot bin here, uh, but you can make any folder, probably in your home directory, make a folder, call it scripts, or I use dot bin or anything you want. And then what you want to do is open up that bash RC file again and add this command right here. Path in capitals equals dollar sign path, and then a link to that directory. So in my case, it's gonna be in our home directory slash dot bin. What this will allow you to do, as soon as you reload bash or zish or whatever you're using, is run scripts from that folder without having to type out the full pass. So if we list the files in dot bin, you can see I have a number of scripts here. I've got one called COVID. Bit of a depressing script, but whatever. Uh, if I just type in COVID, it will print out the results of that script as it is, um, you know, and you can see that's exactly what's basically supposed to be happening here. Uh, now we wanna do the same thing with a little script that will basically just refresh the contents of this list command over and over for us. So let's CD into our bin folder and let's create a new file. I'll call it a uh, tor. There it is right there. Uh, one thing we will need to do basically immediately is make it executable. So to do that, we'll do chmod plus x and then the name of the file, tor. Um, nothing will really obviously change about it, but if we vim into the file, we're ready to get started. So we'll just do a quick uh, bash script here to link to bash. We're going to do the shebang slash user slash bin env bash. 
There are a bunch of different ways to link to Bash. This is probably the most portable in my understanding the best. So uh, what do we want to do here? We want to load that command, tsm-l, which is a transmission remote dash L. And then we'd want to like stop for a period of time. You can do sleep for five seconds. That would work. Yeah, I don't know. Let's, we're gonna have to put this in some kind of a loop, but let's just make sure that this is actually working to begin with. So if we run tour, okay, cool. So it, it runs the command and then it sleeps for five seconds and it should end at some point here. That's not what we wanna happen. So let's go back into that script. And I'll be completely honest with you. I don't know too much about programming. I am not a programmer by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm saying that basically to say, check out the comment section, because if this video gets any kind of views, there'll be a ton of people in the comment section telling me a better way to do something, or, you know, just a different way to do something that I might prefer. That's freaking great, so check that out. Since I'm not a programmer, <laughs> I don't really know what would be like the best kind of loop to use here. I'm gonna use a for loop, because I remember how to do it off the top of my head, and I don't have to Google anything. So, uh, we're gonna do for, and then we'll do some parentheses, more parentheses inside of that. And then we're gonna do space, semicolon, semicolon, space. And then we're gonna do do. And then at the end, we'll do done. And I'll just tab these over. And we might also actually start the whole script by just clearing the screen at the beginning. So we'll run tour again. And okay, cool. It's gonna run the script and then sleep for a second. But what should end up happening is it will just loop that thing over and over again, every five seconds. And that's probably exactly what we want. It's just gonna keep running the same command over and over again, but a bit weird and unorganized is gonna end up taking up the whole screen. So let's just go back into the script and we'll say, after you sleep for five seconds, go ahead and clear the screen. And we might also come up here and we'll say echo out. Uh, we'll say currently downloading or something to that effect. Okay. Okay, go ahead and exit that. We'll run the tour script again. And if we just let this run, actually let's do something a bit different here. Let's go into the tour script and let's change the sleep to 0.5. That should just have it refresh every half a second. And okay, cool. You can see what's going on here. It's refreshing very, very quickly. And all in all, this is gonna work fine. If you just wanna set this to run, put it in a different terminal window and throw it up on a separate screen or somewhere else in the bottom. So. That's pretty great, I'm quite happy with that. Um, let's go back into that tour script and we'll change the sleep time back to five seconds. Now this sleep time is rendered in seconds, so you know if you wanted it to just refresh every minute, you could just do 60 seconds, something like that. I like five seconds, I think it's a good one. I've fluctuated that a bit, I think originally was at 15. You know, I don't know, I mess around with it a lot. And if you even wanted to get super fancy, you could do something like uh, dollar sign one that should be the first input that we give it. So we could run something like Tor.5, or yeah, Tor.5, and that will just refresh the script every half a second, or we could run Tor5, that'll refresh it every five seconds, Tor1, you know, you get the idea. So there's a lot you could do with this. This is a good script, I think. But of course, keep in mind that if you don't wanna jack with any of this and you just need to make some quick edits and it would be nice to have a GUI interface, there are certainly times when it would be nice to have a GUI, GUI interface, just go to localhost and it's on port 9091. But anyways, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I think I'm gonna have a much greater time with torrents, uh, but of course, you know, there's more interesting things to download than just some freaking Linux ISO. So, you know, oh God. Okay, potential issue with this script. This should be a fun little challenge to fix. If we just type in Tor, <laughs> it's like refreshing at zero, I guess. I don't know if that's refreshing every 10th of a second or what, but that goes crazy. So you definitely want to give it an input or, you know, you definitely want to find a way to fix that. I, I think that counts as a bug, uh, but you know, whatever. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.